cataractcoach.com, Iowa exchange of a segment bifocal lens. Yes, this lens has no diffractive rays, but you still cannot cheat physics. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Jagmohan Chawla from Essex in the UK. So you see, this patient had this single piece acrylic lens that has this segment bifocal to it. So the bottom half of the lens is more aimed towards the near vision, the top half towards the distance vision. And this segment bifocal lens has been popular in other countries, not available in the USA, but it's been popular for many years and it has a reasonable performance, but you still can't cheat physics. So this patient was not happy with the performance of the lens, especially for night driving. So this patient says, I cannot live with this lens and I absolutely want to exchange for just a straight monofocal lens and aim me for Plano. So first thing first is filling out viscoelastic and now you've got to carefully dissect out that IOL. You don't want to damage the capsule back. So you make a couple pairs of thesis points here and this IOL needs to be very carefully dissected out of the capsule bag. Now we've sped up the video, it's two times normal speed and that's just so we can get through the whole case here. Not a difficult thing to perform. Now, in this case, Dr. Chow is going to do an IOL exchange for an acrylic monofocal lens in the bag, again, aiming for Plano. And it's going to do something a little different here, which is injecting the new lens in the capsule bag while the old lens is up in the AC, and then you're going to bisect the lens and take it out of pieces. I like our twist and out technique, and I think that works really well. There are other techniques as well, but whatever works for you. Now, the key here is to get under that rex's edge. So he's just using a Sinsky hook here, it looks like. To just get under that rexus edge, it helps separate that IOL from the capsular bag, from the rexus. And getting under there to really kind of create a little bit of a space. Once you have that space there, you can inject viscoelastic under it and use the viscoelastic to help really open up the capsular bag. So careful dissection here, all around, going the other ways as well. And that's going to make for an easier time. Now, you can see the original rexus has contracted down a little bit, wasn't perfectly round. That all doesn't matter, but you don't want to damage it. So you don't want to damage the capsule at all. And remember, this patient's been at least a few months post-op. You can get some contraction of the capsule. You can get adhesion of the anterior capsular leaflet to the posterior capsular leaflet, and that's going to make it harder to get out. So he's just taking his time to really get some dissection going around here and just to help separate that. Now, once that's done, here comes the viscoelastic. This is the secret, the visco dissection. Use a dispersive agent, so a more liquidy agent, and then get that dispersive agent and inject it to really open up the capsule bag. And notice he's making use of those extra pairs and TCs to be able to go 360 degrees and inject that viscoelastic. That's going to make all the difference to really open up that capsule bag. So this is what most of the time is being spent. And once that fluid wave of viscoelastic goes behind the optic, now you know you're in a good position here. This is one of those cases where you know the saying, viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. So use plenty of viscoelastic. Let's get this lens freed. And now that you have that cushion of viscoelastic behind it, look, it can bring that lens up. And actually, maybe it's even a silicone lens or maybe it's a hydrophilic acrylic. I say that because looking at the lens, it looks very soft and very flexible. It doesn't have that typical rigidity of a hydrophobic acrylic that we tend to use in the U.S. most of the time. So again, this lens, this, this is the, the, len, the M plus Lentus lens. We don't have this in the U.S. and I've never implanted it. So I always thought it's interesting to show you this type of video. It also proves the point that despite not having any diffractive rings on it, it still can't cheat the laws of physics and the patient still didn't like the resultant nighttime vision of this lens. So there's the lens being very careful to get it out of the capsule bag. Maybe a two-handed technique here can help too. You have two pairs of teases, make use of those. So he's rotating that lens around. You really want to just get this lens up and out of the way. And so now going on the other side of it, you can see most of this video, more than half of it, is actually this, the careful dissection of the lens out of the bag. There it is. Now you've got the eye well above the anterior capsule rim, even above the iris, and that lens is freed. So now the capsule bag can be inflated a little bit more, and now you can put in your new replacement eye well in that capsule bag. And so that's going to be loaded up here, and slight enlarging of the incision, now, in a case like this, you also want to take into account the astigmatic effect. Perhaps this patient had a little bit of with the rule of astigmatism, hence the incision up at 90 degrees can be very helpful. A little HPMC, hydroxypropylmethyl cellulose, that's a very dispersive viscoelastic placed on top of the cornea. And 
Now we're looking at the patient's eyebrow, probably because of lens loading. There you go. So it looks like we've got a, a Johnson Johnson Technus injector cartridge. And there you go. A Technus lens looks like perhaps a ZC Boo or a iHands lens. That looks reasonable. I'd probably say go for the ZC Boo in this case because you want the absolute best night vision because that was the patient's absolute complaint. And of course, we know from watching our old videos, you can't cheat physics. And if you're going to give, uh, you know, just even even a tiny bit, even a half to half or 67 centimeters for the eye hands, still going to have a very slight compromise of the distance vision. Here comes the new lens. Let's put it in the capsule bag. Nice and easy. Goes out just nice and smooth. And there it is in the correct orientation. Very nicely done. And in a case like this, I'm really tempted to, to try the twist technique for this IOL. But sometimes if it is a silicone lens, which I'm not sure of, that can be very slippery, especially when the silicone lens is coated with viscoelastic. So that can be very tough to grab and let's use forceps that have teeth on them. So now let's see, looks like he's got some micro scissors. Got to cut that lens down the middle and you may want to hold it with the side port or at least use a, a Sinsky hook to grab the other end so you can cut across it more. But that looks pretty good. And notice how he's cut not 100% of the way through so far. Just cut most of the way through, and that's enough to be able to grab this one end. Now rotate a little bit, and now you can bring the other end up. So very smart. Smart to not cut 100% of the way through. You can just cut 80% of the way through so it's still attached, and there's the lens removed in its entirety. That looks great. So now you just finish up the case, take out the viscoelastic. If you need to, put a suture in here and call this done. So very nice case of IOL exchange from Dr. Chawla. And... Keep in mind, you can't cheat physics. If you want the absolute best distance vision, the absolute best nighttime driving vision, well, you're not going to have the near vision, right? At least not with current technologies until we come out with a truly accommodating IOL that's available for everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. CataractCoach.com. Check it out.